Hi, this is Mark from Circle of Dark Mother. Let's talk today about the book of Revelation, which is about personal enlightenment. What is the book of Revelation? Sometimes called the Apocalypse of John. The word apocalypse means revelation, not disaster or end of the world. This is the final book of the Christian New Testament, written somewhere between 86 and 91 AD. Author, the author claims to be named John, and early theologians considered this to be the Apostle John. But with the late dating of the text, this is highly unlikely. The book of Reve Revelation was originally not included in the Christian canon because of its mystic language, but was added at the Synod of Hippo in 393 AD. The book of Revelation has been interpreted as history, allegory, and more recently, prophecy. It's actually a Kabbalistic story that talks about personal and universal enlightenment. So you have to know a little bit about Kabbalah to understand the book of Revelation. Kabbalah is, is best known in Jewish tradition and is often used by many ritual magic traditions, such as Golden Dawn and Thelema. The word Kabbalah actually means tradition or giving. Once one understands Kabbalistic teachings, it becomes clear that Kabbalah is a system of understanding the universe deity, consciousness, and even oneself. It is an extremely flexible system that can work with literally any paradigm. The tree of life is a glyph used in modern Kabbalah to represent the emanations of divine light through the various dimensions that lead to creation. The tree consists of 10 spheres called sephira, plural sephirat, and 22 paths called netava, plural netavat. There are five universes that are varying levels of energy. Adam Kadman, Absolute, Berea, Yetzirah, and Asiya. And that is in descending order with Adam Kadman being the highest and Asiya being physical creation. So part of Revelation, which is Revelation 2 through 3, are letters to seven churches. The seven churches are actually meant to represent the seven chakra or energy centers within the body. The churches are backward from the chakras going top down. Talk about, they talk about the angels of the church. These are the spirits of the chakras for every individual. In Kabbalah, if the chakra is balanced, it is called an angel, if not called a demon. That is why it says Yeshua cast out seven demons from Mary Magdalene. He balanced her chakras. The seven chakra are also the seven separate of construction in the tree of life, or the seven lower spheres. Laodicea in Philadelphia. So church seven, which is the root chakra, Laodicea. See, the angel of Laodicea, these are the words of the Amen, the ruler of creation. Amen, the reliable creation physical manifestation. Neither cold nor hot, and you say, I am rich, I've acquired wealth. And this means really have passion and don't just go through life numb. It's not about physical comfort because it's about realization. Church six, Philadelphia, sacral chakra. The angel of Philadelphia from him who holds the key of David, the one who is the key to unlock higher levels of consciousness, and you have placed before you an open door that no one can shut, the ability to let consciousness flow when we create consciously. And so this one's more positive saying, where the first one was don't do this, this is do this. Sardis and Thyatira. Church 5, Sardis, solar plexus chakra. To the angel of Sardis, the one who holds the spirit, seven spirits and seven stars, the spirit that controls the seven chakra. You have a rep rep reputation of being alive, but you are dead in unfinished deeds. This is the seed of desire. It is the desire of earth, dead, or of spirit, alive. Nothing done apart from spirit is complete. And it's not saying the things of the earth are bad. It's saying when that is the only reason to do something for material gain, then it becomes evil. Uh, the solar plexus is sometimes also called the, the head of the beast when it is completely not aligned to the heart. And what that means is it becomes all about power and control. Church for Thyatira, the heart chakra. To the angel of Thyatira, whose eyes are like blazing fire and feet are burnished bronze. This is seen with fire of spirit and able to walk through anything. I know your deeds, your love and faith. The heart chakra must be open to love and compassion to bring enlighten enlightenment. You tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet. 
Historically, a person who claimed prophecy but didn't have it. Violence and intolerance. This is a manifestation of ego, not listening to the heart. So in other words, they're using a historical, mythical being uh, who was named Jezebel to really talk about um, when you're not really listening to the spirit within, then you fall down the wrong path. Pergamum and Smyrna. Church three, Pergamum, throat chakra. To the angel of Pergamon, the one with the sharp double-edged sword. The sword is the ability to cleave, to cut, or to join. And this is the throat, which is the place of speech. You do not renounce your faith. You don't speak lies saying that you don't really believe. Holding to the teachings of Balaam, a prophet who listened to a donkey, the bestial or egoistic inclination. Teachings of the Nicolaitans. Um, they who put unclean food in their mouth. And this is a symbol of not unclean food, but they put in their mouths things that they then spoke out of their, their mouths, which were things that were not good and uplifting. They were, they were evil. Church two, Smyrna, the third eye chakra. To the angel of Smyrna, the one who is first and the last, able to see the fat past and the future. I know of your afflictions and your poverty, poverty yet you are rich. When you can see through your spiritual eyes, you're rich no matter what your circumstances are. And the last church, Ephesus, Church One, Ephesus, Crown Chakra. To the angel of Ephesus, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands, control of all the energies of consciousness and is able to tra transverse the tree of life to enlightenment. I know your deeds and your hard work and your perseverance practice and follow your spiritual path. You have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not. You discern what is right for your path and aren't swayed by those who try to control you. People who say they know but don't really know. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Don't let go of the reason for your journey. Don't let it all be mental exercise, but instead make it a movement of love and compassion. And this is really about the idea that when we come to spiritual movement, usually it's because we want to embrace ourselves and others. And sometimes it becomes dogma. And that's when you're forsaking the love you had at first. Then as we go on to Re Revelation 4, there's the throne in heaven. One sitting on the throne, the Christ in quote presence, the soul of enlightenment, everyone's true self. So Christ means anointed one. Uh, from the original Greek, Christos. And this sitting on the throne is everyone's true self, their true enlightened soul. Surrounded by 24 elders, 12 male and female of every zodiac sign, representing every human being. Seven lamps that are the seven spirits of God. The seven, These are the seven separate of construction or creation of the universe of absolute. This is the highest universe before total unity. Then there are four living creatures, lion, ox, man, eagle. These are the four fixed signs of the zodiac. Again, all types of humanity. So this is saying that enlightenment is available to everyone, no matter what. Then there are seven scrolls and the lamb, Revelation 5. Seven scrolls with seven seals. The seven scrolls represent physical reality in the universe of Asiya, which is physical creation. The seals are the seven separate of construction of the seal. Who, who is worthy to break them? Who has reached consciousness able to break through to the next universe? The lamb slain with seven horns and seven eyes. The lamb is the bestial soul. However, it is innocent and a sacrifice, meaning it has been slain so the true self may rise. And this is basically saying that our bestial soul, the part of us that's egotistic, isn't evil. Um, but we do need to not kill it, but we need to sacrifice its, its independence so that we can rise. The seven horns are the seven chakra, and the seven eyes are that the chakras are open and active. And at that point, that's when the lamb is totally innocent and is, is willing to be sacrificed for the, the next step. Seven seals, seven trumpets, Revelation 8.11. Seven seals. The seals are the seven separate of construction of Asiya. Breaking these are breaking the ties to Asiya. The soul then rises in consciousness to the next universe, Yatsara. 
the seven trumpets. The trumpets are the seven separate of construction of Yetzirah. Breaking these are breaking the ties to Yetzirah. The soul then rises in consciousness to the next universe, Berea. Where we are now, after the previous sections, consciousness now in the universe of Berea. This is the pinnacle of consciousness inside creation. To break through to cosmic consciousness and full enlightenment, more needs to occur. We get to the woman and the dragon in Revelation 12. Um, it talks about Ima Israel, or Mother Israel, clothed in the sun, moon under her feet, crown of 12 stars around her head, the 12 zodiac signs again. She's pregnant and in childbirth. She is the mother as embodiment of the tree of life, giving birth to all enlightened souls. The red dragon, which is enormous with seven heads and seven horns and seven crowns. Unlike the lamb, this is ego turned into a monster with seven heads pulling it in seven directions, seven horns for the chakras, but with no eyes, so it's not open, and seven crowns because it thinks it is king of all. This is the embodiment of the ego, the collective ego of humanity. A war breaks out in heaven. The baby is birthed, this enlightenment, but it's not mature. As above, so below, and as below, so above. The war of the soul between enlightenment and the ego, both below and above. The beasts and the 144,000 in Revelation 13 and 14. The beast from the sea, 10 horns, 7 heads, 10 crowns, blasphemous names on each head. This is the tree of Klippoth. This is the tree of shadow, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And this represents the institutions of hatred and ignorance. It has 10 horns because it has 10 um, Klippoth, just like the tree of life has 10 separate. It has 10 crowns because it thinks it's in charge of all 10, but it only has seven heads because it doesn't understand beyond creation. The beast from the earth, two horns like a lamb, speaks like a dragon because it's deception. Its number is 666, which really means a trinity of man. Six is the number of man. Seven is the number of enlightenment. So this is pure ego. This is the shadow self and those that try to take people off their path. The lamb and 144,000, which is a derivative of 12 which again is all the zodiac signs, the uplifted ego, all that have found enlightenment through time. And this doesn't mean just 144,000. Numbers in Kabbalah are symbolic and not meant to be taken literally. Then there are seven bowls, Revelation 15 through 16. The bowls are the seven separate of construction of Berea. Breaking these are breaking the ties to Berea. The soul then rises in consciousness to the next universe, absolute outside time and space, but there is stu still duality. What happens next? Enlightenment of absolute. The soul has reached enlightenment where it no longer needs to incarnate. It can to assist other souls, but does not have to. However, this is not the end. Revelations talks about a thousand years of peace, which that thousand means as much time as it takes, but the dragon is released again. This is the last stage of enlightenment where the soul finally is freed from duality. Hopefully that was interesting, a different take on Revelation than what you may have seen before. It's super complicated because of all of the Kabbalistic terminology and such, but hopefully you get the idea that this is really about a Kabbalistic movement of consciousness, not some end of the world um, type endeavor. Um, if you like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you.